Well, hi there, it's Sandy Alnock, and today I'm going to show you how to make some really simple scene elements for farm themed cards. Honeybee recently sent me a package that had these cute little stamps in it, and they are adorable. I love goats. I have a thing for goats. Long story to that, that maybe I'll tell you if I have time in this video. But I wanted to show you how to draw some other elements that you can use on farm scene cards. There's lots of farm stamps, and it might be helpful to have things to put in the scene. And a hay bale is one of the easiest. Just a squiggly line for the outside edge. And I'm actually adding a couple little strings to go around it. The ground on the bottom, I have the squigglies going the opposite way. So it looks like that's sticking up in front of the, the hay bale itself. And then putting in a horizon line that's above the level of the feet of the goat. So it looks like they're standing within the whole horizon line of, of the, the hay on the bottom. Now let's talk about color mixing a little bit. If I were to use quinacridone rose, the pink that's in my palette, it would be a little bit too pink for my pig. I wanted him to be a little creamier. So in order to mix a color that's more like a salmon pink, I added some yellow to it, some new gamboge. You can add all different kinds of pinks and yellows together to get this kind of a mix. But now I know that I can get these two colors to blend. And I'm going to work on getting a, a mix that kind of looks right and paint that in there first on portions of the pig. There's times when you can really worry about the shading on something and try to get the shading in the right spots. I'm not really worrying about that. I just want to have some loose, fun watercolor. So I've painted it around the top and then around the feet, and I'm going to fill it in with some plain water so that the color mixes and develops a bunch of different colors within it. So I get some light areas and some darker areas. To do my goat, I wanted something that felt more like a warm gray than a cool gray. And the black color that's in my palette is, it's just too bluish. It's neutral tint and it's too blue. But if I add a little bit of yellow to it, I can start to make a color that is a little more natural, like what I wanted for my goat. So I've made a mix of that. You can mix them to different percentages so that you have more or less. But since it has more of a blue feel to it, you may have noticed the middle of my swatches went a little bit green. So I had to make sure I added enough of one color in the other so that it came out more as a warm gray as opposed to a green color. But adding the water to the empty spots that I left allowed me to just let the color move and it really made some interesting definition between that front leg and the tummy. I wanted a little more intense color and since it's still wet, I still have time to play with it. I mixed up some much heavier color this time with that had less water and more pigment and then I can drop it into a few areas and that's gonna create some contrast but it's gonna allow the color to move and blend in all the other water that's already on the palette itself or on the paper itself. Next up, I wanted to start working on the hay bale and one of the colors that's in my palette, the yellow ochre is a really great color for hay and I'm gonna let it just be that. I'm not gonna worry about going hyper realistic and trying to make that work. I wanted to keep this light and easy. I'm gonna use the same color down below, but I wanna have some definition between the, the area down below and the hay bale. So how would you do that? A couple of different ways that you can handle it. You can either make one of them more intense in color and have a lot more saturation of the yellow ochre, or I just took some of the leftover color I had from the goat and dropped it into the ground. And it separates out the color that's not touched by that, that neutral color that's in the hay bale. And then the ground color is then a different color entirely. And I can add some of that same color onto the little horns and uh, finish that one up. Now this other guy is a little tougher. So for those who are either in my drawing classes, because this is something you'll recognize, I'm making an upside down bucket for the duck to stand on because the duck needs to be up there too. You could also do a hay bale for this one. And I'm going to do the same hay bale bottom. So basically the, the top of the bucket 
is down in the grasses, in, in the hay that's at the bottom of the, the bucket. And then I'm going to put a couple lines around it to indicate it's a bucket. And then I wanted to have a handle on the bucket. And you don't have to put this part in, but if you wanted to, just make the handle kind of go around the back side. So it's going to be have a, a place for it to attach on the side of the bucket and then swing around the back of the bucket. Again, I'm going to do the same horizontal area across it so that I can define the bottom edge. I'm not putting backgrounds behind their their heads. You could put a barn wall back there with a window. You could put a whole farm back there. Lots of different things you could do or just leave it simple like this. I'm going to do the same kind of thing with the goat that I did before. And maybe while I do, I'll tell you, I used to work for a nonprofit, uh, World Vision, and one of my tasks there was promoting the gift catalog. And if you've ever wanted to give somebody a really interesting gift and you wanted to also do something good for someone else, you can buy a goat that actually goes to someone in a poor area of the world. And those people can make all kinds of money off of having goats in their lives. Like they can sell the milk, they can uh, breed them, all kinds of things. And your, your recipient gets a gift card which is kind of nice. So you get the gift given to your loved one and they know that something's been given in their name, which is kind of cool. So I'll link to World Vision in the doobly-doo down below and over on my blog. So if you're interested in giving a goat to someone, you can do that. Okay, so I mixed up a bluish color. I added some blue to the gray when I colored the bucket because I wanted the bucket to feel like it was a different color than the goat. So you can really easily push a color by just adding a little of something else to it. But the rest of it is gonna be basically the same as the other painting. I'm gonna use the yellow ochre for the hay down below. And uh, probably could have used a bigger brush for this bottom portion here. It takes a little while when you're using a number eight brush like this one. I have a number 12 that I recommend that everybody have for large areas like that. It just makes it a lot easier and again, I'm going to drop some of that neutral color into the grasses down below so that I can have some, sh some shading on that hay. But I'm starting to also get some weird shapes in there as that bleeds out into the rest of it. So easy to fix. Just grab some more of the yellow ochre and paint right over it while it's wet. And you can recover that really easily and end up with a nice area down below of neutral colors for the hay that they're standing on. So that's it for today's little video. I hope you enjoyed this. There's links to all the supplies down in the doobly-doo, the stamp set, if you also want to color goats. And I will see you again very soon. Have a great day. Go make something beautiful and give it to somebody else because our world needs us to give away a little bit more love and kindness. Take care. Bye-bye.